few weeks ago, I was in an estate sale with my parents and across the field, I saw this quilt top and I just knew I had to have it. So I ran over, scooped it up, saw the price tag, which was $5 and put it under my arm, would not put it down until we checked out. But before we get started talking about this wonderful quilt top, my name is Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance. Welcome to another episode of Lessons from an Old Quilt. It is just the quilt top, or what we sometimes call a flimsy because well, it's flimsy, there's no body to it. So it doesn't have a backing or a batting in it. It's not bound or anything like that, it's just the top. It's from the 1930s, 1940s, I think. I could identify most of the fabrics, but not all. However, the style is from that time, maybe even a little earlier, and it was a popular pattern. It's called the trip around the world. And it has all these little squares that just make this Bargello type effect. It links them all together almost like a chain. And it's a lot of fun to make. If you've never made one, it's worth looking into because you do get this wonderful design fairly easily. Let's get started taking a closer look at this incredible quilt. So when we examine this quilt top a little more closely, we can see exactly how this pattern was put together. But I do want to point out, this was placed on point, meaning it was placed on the diagonal. If we turn this, you can see what I'm talking about. See how now it's straight? That's how it was constructed. Now, traditionally, we see it constructed in units, usually in this case, of a 25 patch, which you can see here. And then that 25 patch is just rotated. Now, because this is a quilt top and I can see the back, I know that that is not how this was constructed. This was actually constructed in four patch units. So I'm assuming uh, that the maker had some sort of chart or graph or something that helped um, them put this together because we aren't seeing what we would use now as a modern way of strip piecing done in this particular quilt. So I can just see somebody with a whole box of squares kind of following a graph or a chart and figuring this out because it would be sort of like a puzzle. The fabrics in this are incredible. Uh, and you can see there's not a whole lot of contrast between the fabrics, which gives it like a watercolor effect. Uh, I'll put up here on the screen a black and white of this so you can see what I'm talking about. But we do see some contrast, but not a lot. So let's take a look at some of these fabrics. We have this wonderful plaid fabric, which is all going the same direction. And of course, I love that. If you watch any of my other videos that have plaids in it, that's like one of my favorite things when I see that. And I do think because of the movement or because of just the style of this particular block, it works in this. It gives your eyes something to see and it doesn't get distracted by maybe a turned or an off uh, diagonal that you might see in some of these plaids. We also have this wonderful pink cherry print. Uh, we have this pink print that has like umbrellas or something like that in it. There's this great paisley-like fabric here. We also see the pinks and the purples and the reds and, and all of these wonderful colors that go together well. But I do want to point something out about the fabric that is used. So the maker ran out of fabrics, or at least that's my theory, because uh, you can see that here where the maker substituted this pink for this pink. And they're about the same tone, same value, the same, about the same color. I don't know if the maker ran out of this fabric and had to substitute it. That's the way it appears uh, because we only really see it in this line here. And let me see if it's in the bottom. Nope, it's, well, nope, it's not in the bottom either. So it's only across the top of this unit that we see that there's a difference. So I, I don't know if the maker just didn't have enough of this or used it as a style choice. The maker only did this in one other area. Uh, now this fabric is the same on this side over here. So again, the maker was very organized, uh, but it doesn't go all the way around with the same fabric. The same is true up here. We see a fabric change and the maker did make sure to be consistent with this one on the bottom as well. Uh, but this is the original fabric or at least the one that's repeated in the middle. So let's look at the back of this and that's one nice thing about flimsies or quilt tops is that you can see the back and see how it's constructed. This is completely, completely hand pieced including the borders and um, it's done really well. The stitches are very even and it's a precise way. The only thing that you see kind of is that some of the seams are pressed one way at one end and one way at the other but it 
doesn't really matter. It all goes together and all fits well. The big thing I want to talk about though is the border. It's the only drawback in this quilt. Uh, so the way that the maker put this together is that the maker took a long strip of fabric and just sewed it on and then at the end cut it off. And let me see if I can show you that, how I know that. Well, you can kind of see it here where it's not even, but you can really see it here. So it was just kind of lopped off. And then the maker just went on to the other side. So the problem with this is, is that we have bias edges here with these squares that were cut off, okay? So they're very, very stretchy. So when the maker was adding this, it didn't give any stability. The right way to do it, and I, I use the word right very loosely because there are so many different ways to get an end product, but the way that this could have been avoided, I guess I like that, that language a little bit better, is to take your quilt top when you're adding borders, measure across the middle, okay, and cut your borders that size, and then measure again across the middle on the other end to get your other borders. I hope that makes sense because if you just cut a long strip and sew it on, it's not gonna be the right size and it's gonna cause your quilt to go out of square and be very, very wonky. So always make sure you measure across the middle of your quilt top and then cut accordingly. Don't measure the edge because the edge could be off. Measure across the middle and that's gonna give you more of a true border on these and it's gonna square up your quilt better. And here we see where it that was not done. So, you know, going forward, I'll probably take off these borders. They're also almost dry rotted. Um, I don't know if you can kind of see my hand through it. Uh, they're not super stable. I'm afraid they're gonna tear. So I wanna preserve the center of this and I am gonna take these off. I might look for a fabric like this because I think that the solid really works well with this quilt top. It, isn't distracting from the design and it frames it well. So I'll probably look for a solid to put on, but this is just important to think about when you are putting borders on your quilt. And finally, I just wanna mention, you know, this quilt is literally made up of just squares. It's such a cool effect and, you know, it's something that as makers, we sometimes think we need really fancy blocks and it, this is just squares, that's it. It's just squares. So um, think about that as you're designing quilts and looking at patterns. Sometimes the simplest blocks can make the most impact with a quilt. So there are many lessons as always from this quilt top uh, that we can take away as makers. One of those lessons is to substitute fabric. So as long as it's the same tone, it's the same value, same color, that type of thing, you're not gonna notice it. In fact, when I was first looking at this, I didn't notice. It was really when I got into studying it closely that I noticed there were different fabrics in it. And I'm sure the maker just ran out of a certain fabric uh, and just substituted a different one that was the same color and the same tone and same value and you would never ever know it. Next, consider making a quilt of all squares. Sometimes we don't think of squares as being spectacular and obviously this quilt shows us that they are. And finally, the most important lesson is when you're adding those borders, make sure you measure the width of your quilt that you're putting the borders on and then the length and cut the borders that size and make sure that you measure through the middle of each. If you don't and you just take them and sew them on and then cut them off, you're gonna possibly get some wonky seams, especially when there's bias pieces involved. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Lessons from an Old Quilt. This trip around the world quilt is really spectacular and I'm so happy to share it with you and I'm also so happy I got such a bargain on it, right? It's so great. As always, please consider subscribing. It's free to subscribe, by the way. And follow me on Instagram and check out my blog. And I so much appreciate all the support that you've given me through this endeavor. It's been so much fun and I love sharing these quilts with you. Make sure you take some time to sew this week. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time on Lessons from an old quote. Bye.